Hey there, welcome to Military Images Live. This is Ron Coddington, the editor of Military Images Magazine, coming to you from our headquarters. This is, believe it or not, season three, episode one, our third season, and I'm really happy to be here. I'm happy to be back. Uh, our last episode was the uh, just a couple weeks ago, and um, we are back the second Monday uh, every two weeks is the Monday, so look for us uh, uh, at that time. So we'll be posting on Facebook so you'll know when our next uh, episode is. So uh, welcoming lots of folks on tonight. Uh, I see Jeff. I see Carol Coddington. Happy early birthday, mother. Uh, Mike Pissarro is here. Fred Taylor is here. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming on. Uh, as we have more folks coming on, I uh, want to uh, tell you about our new store. The Military Images store uh, is uh, now live, and um, we're celebrating our new store with a special deal. If you are, uh, if you've never subscribed to Military Images magazine, now is the time because we're going to give you a 25% discount. One of the things that our new store offers is uh, the idea or the, the chance to enter a code, uh, the popular added discount code. And uh, tonight, the code is LIVE, L-I-V-E. So go to shopmilitaryimages.com and uh, somewhere along the checkout process, you'll be prompted for the word LIVE. Type it in and a 25% discount will be applied to your subscription. So this offer, again, is only for new subscribers. If you already subscribe, we appreciate your support, but tonight we are reaching out to those who have maybe have been thinking about subscribing but haven't done it. So go to shopmilitaryimages.com and enter the code LIVE to get 25% off. Super exciting stuff. Now, I want to pick up where we left off uh, with the last show, musicians. I want to tell you a happy Facebook story. Um, this is an image, by the way, of a Pfeiffer from Megan Kimball's collection. Megan, thank you so much for sharing it. Uh, Megan shared this image through the image collector. Here we go. Uh, the Image Collector is uh, a Facebook page that is run, edited by Dale Neeson. Uh, Dale, hope you're out there this evening. Uh, Dale and um, I believe Al Nemec is also one of the uh, editors of that page. Anyway, uh, after the show, Dale contacted me and he said, hey, what if I reach out to everyone who uh, uh, tunes in to the Image Collector page and ask them to submit images of musicians. And now I'm looking for musicians with instruments. And as I mentioned to you all last time on our show, I believe the number was 82, 82 scans that we had made at a number of Civil War shows over the last couple of years. Now, the grand total of musician images that I've scanned is about 200. Of that 200, about 82 actually were holding instruments or posing with instruments. Now, uh, the image collector, it turned out to be an overwhelming super success. Uh, we went from 82 images, and I'm, this is not, this is just uh, amazing how it worked out this way. We went from 82 images to 164 images. So thanks to Dale Neese and Al Nemec and everybody at the image collector, we literally doubled the number. Uh, and I don't know if this is, uh, is helpful, but uh, I think it's kind of interesting when you survey all the images that we've collected, you'll find that the overwhelming number, 78, uh, were folks, soldiers holding bugles and horns. We had 49 who were uh, posing with drums and percussion instruments. There were 14 bands. There were 13 fifers or fife and wind uh, instruments. And then down here at the bottom, we had 10 that had a fiddle or a guitar. So by far, buglers and folks with sax horns and other brass instruments were dominant. At one point, oh, 
got to show you this. Uh, this is one of the submissions uh, from Dale. And this kicked off some kind of a, uh, an image frenzy. They were coming in so fast. Uh, it was hard for me to be able to copy them all and get the information. Uh, Al Nemec, who, as those of you who go to the, the image collector often know, um, Al will drop in these blockbuster images from time to time. They started showing up. Uh, then uh, we had uh, the Wisconsin Brigade came in. That's uh, Jim Rivest and Mark Storch. Uh, they started dropping a bunch of images onto the site. Uh, here's one uh, from here's one of Mark Storch's image. Um, and then uh, we had a flurry of activity from Ron Palm, and uh, all this was happening in uh, real time. And uh, it was just super fun to uh, feel the enthusiasm of everybody on the page as they're putting these images out there. I know that I enjoyed it a whole lot and uh, was super excited. Um, and I hope that everyone who was uh, on the page that night was enjoying it as well. So as I mentioned, 165 images, um, they're all gonna be going to Chris Nelson, uh, who is going to be doing an analysis of the image uh, the images, and we're going to organize them in categories that may be different from what you've seen here. So uh, Chris has requested printouts. So I've got, here's what 165 images uh, looks like in, uh, in printouts. So they will be going out to Chris. But I want you to know, if you've got another musician that you want to uh, let me know about, post it on uh, the Military Images Facebook page, um, post it on the Image Collector, uh, anywhere you like, but do bring it to my attention. We'll be taking selected images and publishing them in a series of galleries in the magazine with uh, analysis and interpretation. Now, I wanna share this image. Uh, this is one that I posted, uh, I guess it might have been a, a couple of weeks ago now. And um, my first thought, if you look closely, you're going to see this woman has a uh, skirt that ends uh, around the shins. Uh, she has white stockings on, um, black shoes, and um, she's carrying uh, what I thought was a hiking pole. And um, I immediately connected it to um, pedestrianism, which was a mid 19th century activity that involved walking long distances. It was definitely a sport, something of an endurance sport and uh, could be competitive. I assumed that she was involved in the sport of pedestrianism. Now, Elizabeth Topping and Liz, if you're out there, give us a nod uh, and others began commenting to point out how wrong I was. Um, uh, what she is really holding here is a balance stick. And um, Liz highlighted this, and she also sent me a link to a Google book, uh, a digitized book, and uh, classic mid-19th century style. You've got uh, like a half a dozen different typefaces, uh, and probably hard for you all to read, but it says, Handbook of Calisthenics and Gymnastics, a complete drill book for schools, families, and gymnasiums. And uh, it goes on and on and on. And if you begin to look through this book, you're going to see, sure enough, there she is, uh, the woman with the shin-high um, dress, and uh, she has a balancing stick. This is a particular page that shows some of the instructions um, of how to properly exercise Here's another one, different things you can do. And it's not only the balance stick, it involves weights and all that. Now, this book dates from 1860. And one of the reasons it caught my attention is because we oftentimes think about the Civil War, uh, I think in a vacuum, we get focused on the military, we get focused on the soldiers and sailors. And we forget, <clears throat> excuse me, we forget that there's a whole society um, that's going on uh, at the time uh, that's informing things. There's trends, <coughs> pardon me, there's trends, there's activities. And of course, exercise happened to be one of them. So on the cusp of the Civil War, you have an exercise craze that appears to be sweeping the nation. Uh, and uh, this image sort of caught my fancy because it's called a gymnastics charge. Um, it sort of has a militaristic feel about it. I'm sure it was unintentional, 
Uh, but having this image appear in 1860 on the verge of war is uh, just, it, it caught my attention. So um, I really think it's interesting to get an understanding of the context that the Civil War uh, um, happened, things going on around it. So one thing I didn't mention about the book is also inside of it is music. So the idea of exercise uh, circa 1860 was to um, use weights, use the balance stick, uh, and of course your body to exercise to music. Hmm. Sound familiar? Well, those of you who are as old as I am will remember 1981, you have Olivia Newton-John and physical. You have about that same year, John, F excuse me, Jane Fonda's workout book. Then you got in the 90s, the Tai Bo craze. So there's more, uh, 2010s, you get into Zumba. So interesting, when you begin to connect the dots here, this idea of music and exercise uh, is something that's part of who we are. It's been around for a while and uh, ties us together. So um, you've got an interesting history, an interesting connect connection of music and exercise. Um, of course, the folks here that are doing Zumba uh, probably didn't have to sing along, uh, but uh, back in the 1860s, that was the case. Now, you may be wondering, well, what about the soldiers? Uh, is there calisthenics and exercises for them? I did a little bit of searching around, and I confess not much, um, but uh, you all may have seen examples of it. I didn't. I was only able to find two examples of uh, Civil War soldiers and exercises. I call it recreation. Um, here's the classic uh, fisticuffs. Uh, I guess you could call that exercise. Yeah, and then, um, of course, there is baseball. And, um, and so if you come across any information about Civil War soldiers exercising, I would love to hear about it. If not, what you have here is a brief history of exercise and music from the 1860s to the modern day. So, next. This is an Epson V600 scanner. I have uh, no connection to the Epson company. Um, don't know anybody there and I get no commission on any of their products. I do own one. I own the V600 uh, and um, it's a very reliable flatbed scanner, perfect for scanning images. Um, the reason I'm bringing it up is a number of folks over the last year or two have asked me about uh, digitizing images and what is the best product to use. And um, I think the word has gotten around, certainly on social media, about uh, the V600 as being my recommendation um, for scanners. Uh, I think it's an interesting um, note that I saw. Again, this is on Dale Neeson's uh, image collector page. Uh, this is a note by or a post by William Christian or Bill uh, Christian. Um, Bill says this, and this is a great tip for photo collectors. Um, uh, Bill says, my mentor for image collection told me purchasing reference books and equipment from my collection should be a priority. No one's ever told me that, but I love the idea of it. Um, he suggested spending an amount equal to one of the best images would be well worth it. I have followed his advice. He also suggests that the goal of collecting should not be to own the most number of images, but to have significant and pleasing images without regard to quantity. Now, uh, Chuck Joyce responded. Chuck Joyce is a senior editor uh, of Military Images. And um, Chuck also uh, says that Bill also, or that he uses the V600 scanner. And um, he says, I usually make two scans of images, of each image, one at 1200 DPI in a TIFF format uh, to have as sharp a reproduction as possible. And I will tell you that 1200 DPI is considered archival by the Library of Congress. Uh, and TIFF is important here because TIFF files uh, mean that you're getting all of the original material. Uh, it hasn't been compressed in any way. So you're getting literally a raw scan. 
um, Chuck goes on to say that he saves that second image as a JPEG. And JPEG, by the way, it's a compression program. So the moment that you save a file as a JPEG file, you're compressing the visual data. And when you compress it, some of that uh, information is lost. So as Chuck says, make a scan that's 1200 DPI and save it as a TIFF, that's T-I-F-F -F or T-I-F. Um, and that's your archival version. It's gonna be a big, it's a monster file. So uh, make sure you have some space to store it. The other one is a JPEG and you can save it as a JPEG or if you have Photoshop or some other editing program, you can call up your TIFF, reduce the size and then save it as a JPEG. So um, there's one thing I wanna add to this is, uh, um, uh, is actually when, once you've scanned it, you might consider as part of your archiving process is to uh, make a record of that image. Uh, make a record, say, what you know about it, um, who the person is if they're identified, um, say the name or write down the name of the photographer if known. Um, also really important, write down what you know about the provenance. Um, the simplest thing to note is who you purchased it from. And if you don't know the name of the person, um, say where you purchased it from. And I think it's also a good idea to record the price that you paid for it. Uh, to give you a sense of how important this information could be, it actually becomes part of the provenance of the image. And um, I wanna take you to this set of images, <coughs> excuse me, that appeared in our winter 2017 issue um, as a gallery um, from Mike McAfee's collection. It was titled, The Regiment That Saved the Capitol, Rare Portraits of the Feigned 7th New York State Militia from the Matthew Brady Studios. Uh, Mike wrote something in the introduction to this gallery of images that I think can start to give you a sense of where the provenance in the collector's world is something that becomes interesting. I'm gonna read this paragraph that Mike wrote. Uh, he says, in 1861, Photographs by Matthew Brady Studios in New York and Washington, D.C. immortalized the regiment. The images, including the carts to visit here, are among the most artistic studio and camp scenes of the war. Most came from two albums purchased in a Baltimore bookstore by famed photo collector Herb Peck in 1971. Peck later sold them to a New Jersey collector. Through the years, the albums were broken up and the images sold individually. So a really nice bit of information there uh, that Mike was able to convey, I should say the late Mike McAfee, uh, Mike passed last year, um, and a very interesting bit of prominence, or pardon me, of provenance that might have been lost if Mike hadn't noted it. And what I find interesting about it is it establishes the fact that this image and others that were part of Mike's gallery uh, were one time part of an album. And you might have guessed that, but the fact that Mike is able to say it with certainty, I think adds a certain bit of reality to uh, the history of this image. Now, another fun fact, while we're on the subject of uh, collecting. Uh, this is Pat Graves. Uh, he posted, uh, I take that back, he sent me an email. And uh, here's, what he, here's what he says. There must be a lot of Civil War era photos out there that contain information about the subject. Is there an online site where one might discover a photo of his ancestor? Well, I wrote Pat back and told him about uh, all of the places that one can go. Uh, find a grave, Ancestry.com. Of course, I mentioned Civil War Photo Sleuth as a, as a new place, a recent place to go. Uh, HDS, for those of you who know the Civil War uh, historical database. Uh, of course, there's the Library of Congress and a number of other institutions. So Pat and I corresponded back and forth on this. And Pat asked me a question that I want to I ask you about. But before I get there, let me tell you that one fact I heard along the way, uh, and this was responding to Pat's question, um, I've heard uh, the figure 10% given of all images identified. And I confess to you, I've never studied this uh, subject 
or this question. So I really don't know the answer. I think it is worthy of doing some analysis though. So um, if any of you uh, watching tonight have an idea, I'd love to get your thoughts. Um, better yet, if you studied it, um, drop me an email or a, a text and let me know uh, what you're thinking because I would love to dig into this question a little bit more of uh, an estimate on what, how many photos are identified. And I realize that that figure may vary, we might be able to break it down by hard plate images versus cards to visites. So just throwing that out there. Back to what Pat Graves had to say. Um, one question he asked that I wanna throw out to all of you. He says, do sellers of Civil War images trace subjects through Ancestry.com to try to make a sale. I have to confess, I never thought about this uh, as, uh, as, a, as a way to make a sale. And I'm not a dealer um, and I don't sell regularly, but uh, some of you might be. And I'm curious about that too. If you are a seller uh, and you go uh, and you contact people on Ancestry.com uh, to try to make a sale, I'd love to know it. Now, over the last couple of weeks, I've had, or pardon me, the last couple of shows, I've had, uh, frankly, a lot of material, and um, I've left a few pieces that I couldn't get to from show to show, and um, I want to make sure that we get them into this program. So uh, the first one comes from Andrew Garten. Uh, Andrew is a regular uh, watcher of Military Images Live. And um, he says, I'm sending you several pics of a soldier I just picked up in hopes that maybe you have seen this background or know someone who has. As always, I appreciate your help and knowledge. Uh, Andrew, great backdrop. And uh, unfortunately, not one that I recognize, but uh, you've got some great stuff going on in the background. There's the bucolic uh, scene of uh, a river moving through. You've got some, uh, looks like a farm building out here. Lots of trees. Uh, it almost has a southern feel to it, a little bit of uh, um, bayous going on in the background here. So I'm going to post this on the Facebook, on our Facebook page for you to have a look. It also, this image also is a reminder for me to tell you about uh, Adam Fleischer, who is uh, going to be writing a new column on backdrops for military images. I mentioned it in our last show, and I want to mention again, uh, uh, Adam turned in a draft of his first piece, and um, I think you're going to love it. I was, uh, it was really fascinating for me to um, read the research and the process of discovery that he went through uh, in adding depth to a particular backdrop that some of you are going to recognize. My next request, one that's been sitting in the pile, uh, looking for a photograph of this officer, Morris Cooper Foote, 44th and 92nd New York Infantries. Uh, this request comes from Craig McNutt. He says, I'm in desperate need of a war period image of a soldier named Morris Cooper Foote. Uh, Craig is writing a book about uh, Foote's life and um, based on a Civil War diary that's never before been published. There's an interesting detail um, in Craig's request. He goes on to tell the story of Foote's military experience. Uh, he's captured by the Confederate Army at the Battle of Plymouth in 1864, goes off to prison. He winds up in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, as many of you may know, there is a tit-for-tat battle that's going on there. Um, the, Confederate sold, the Confederate Army is putting Union soldiers in front of um, their defenses, sort of using them as human shields. Um, the Union Army retaliates by putting Confederate soldiers in front of their defenses. Uh, it starts out with 50 on each side, and then it explodes to putting 600 on each side. Uh, this is pretty scary stuff. This is the kind of thing where um, you later hear about this in the, Iraq, the first Gulf War um, with Iraq in 19, the early 80s. So, um, but you've got human shields being used around a civil war in Charleston. And um, what caught my attention from Craig is that apparently this Morris Cooper foot 
was the only officer that was wounded during these, uh, these pretty grim exchanges. So I'm eager to know more because to my knowledge, um, I did not know that anyone had been wounded. So um, if you all have a carte de visite or a hard plate image of Morris Cooper Foote, I believe he was a non-com before he became the commissioned officer. So um, I'll put this on the Facebook page and you all can, uh, can help out. So I've got one more um, for the evening. It's from Jonathan Shipley. And uh, he says, I stumbled upon a photograph on Facebook the other day. It was of my ancestor, Jenks Heston. This is him. It's really difficult to read, but I'll put it on our page anyway. Um, he's a private in the 45th Ohio Infantry. Killed during the war, I had a brother, Samuel, who died soon after. Um, I contact the, contacted the owner of said photograph, and alas, he sold it and resold it a couple of times over, and now he has no idea of where it might be. There's the provenance question. So, um, uh, Jonathan is trying to track down this image of Jenks Heston, 45th Ohio Infantry. And um, Jonathan ended his email to me with a line that I feel like is a, is a nice way to end this first episode of uh, season three. He says, he's out there somewhere. I'd like to bring him home. So, if you know where Jenks Heston is, 45th Ohio Infantry, time for him to go home. So if you recognize the image, let me know. With that, I'm going to say goodnight from Military Images Live. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Happy hunting. Look forward to seeing you the next episode. Take care. Good night.